At the cemetery, a funeral is taking place for a teenage boy. His classmates place flowers on the closed coffin as the family sobs inconsolably. Meanwhile, the boy lies alive and unharmed in the coffin and plays on the phone. Darren lives a normal life. He is popular among his classmates, is an excellent student, pleases his parents and has many friends. But one person doesn't fit into Darren's regular life and that's his best friend Steve. He invites Darren to skip history class. The guy reluctantly agrees. Steve then goads Darren into breaking the school lantern. For this, Darren receives a scolding from the teacher and parents. At home, Darren's mother desperately scolds her son and forbids him to be friends with Steve. The father also believes that Steve is leading Darren astray. According to parents, the right path is a great college, a stable job, and your own family. A terrifying cycle of college, work and family goes through Darren's head. The guy understands that he does not want to live like this, but he does not contradict his parents. The next day, Darren informs Steve that their friendship should now be a secret so as not to anger his parents. Steve is indignant at this news and reproaches Darren for being spineless. Their argument is interrupted by an old-fashioned car with the word destiny on its plates. An unknown man throws a leaflet out of the window and leaves. The leaflet falls at Darren's feet. The guys see that this is an invitation to a freak circus performance. Friends would like to go, but Darren is banned from going out for two months. However, in the evening, Darren quietly sneaks out of the house and goes with Steve to the circus. Friends arrive at the building of an old theater and notice a blood-red moon in the sky. Steve enjoys the sight as he is obsessed with vampires and Darren is obsessed with spiders. The guys buy tickets from a little freak and go into the hall. The show starts. The host of the show, with a large, oddly shaped head, announces the entry of the Wolfman. With a roar, the Wolfman approaches a woman sitting in the audience. Moments later, the wolf bites off the woman's arm. She screams, the rest of the audience is also scared. The Wolfman runs away, and the woman with the bitten off arm walks onto the stage. Her hand immediately grows back, because this artist is the queen of regeneration. The bony Alexander appears next. He has no skin and internal organs in the abdomen. The audience is also entertained by a woman with huge teeth and a man with two stomachs, able to digest any object. Next on the stage is a snake-skin guy named Evra, and after that, a spectacular woman, Madame Truska. She invites Darren to be her assistant. From the guy's touch, the woman grows a beard. The hall rejoices. Madame Truska looks into Darren's eyes and sees his future. She senses that something bad is about to happen. Next up is a magician named Larton Krepsley and a spider, Madame Okta. The man literally flies onto the stage. Darren, hypnotized, can't take his eyes off the spider. Madame Okta's bite promises certain death, but Krepsley manages to control her with the help of playing the flute. Suddenly, Steve informs Darren that Krepsley is a real vampire, because his portrait is in one of the books about vampires. Meanwhile, the magician releases Madame Okta into the hall, and she falls right on Darren's leg. Krepsley approaches the boy, takes the spider and says that vampires don't exist. And if someone knew about them, he would be strangled by them in a dream. The performance stops as a crowd of people fighting against freaks enters the hall. Taking advantage of the general confusion, Darren runs backstage. Here he finds Krepsley's dressing room and goes inside. Fascinated by Okta, there is no one in the dressing room, however, there is a coffin here. Darren approaches Okta's cage. He admires the spider and plays the flute for her. Suddenly, voices are heard outside the door. Darren grabs the cage, stuffs it into his bag, and hides in the closet. Krepsley and a friend named Govner enter the dressing room. From their conversation, it becomes clear that they are vampires. Recently, their friend was killed by the enemies of the vampires the cruel vampins. Friends also discuss the return of the mysterious Mr. Tiny from another world. Govner believes that Tiny imagines himself as the arbiter of fate and wants to destroy the vampires with the help of the vampins. Govner wants to fight the vampins and avenge his friend's death but Krepsley refuses to go with him. He is categorically against war. At that moment, Steve bursts into the dressing room. He firmly believes that Krepsley and Govner are vampires. Steve asks to be turned into a vampire too. Krepsley says that upon becoming a vampire he will have to leave family and friends, so this is a bad idea. But Steve complains about his dysfunctional family and insists on being converted. Then Krepsley tastes his blood and immediately spits. Steve has bad blood, he can't be a vampire. The guy gets angry and threatens the vampires with violence. But the men quickly kick him out of the dressing room. Govner flies away and Krepsley starts looking for Okta. Darren, who has been sitting in the closet all this time, opens the secret door and runs away. He is immediately picked up by a black car. All this happens in front of Krepsley. The same Mr. Tiny and one of the vampins are sitting in the car. Tiny invites Darren to join them, but the guy gets out near his house and runs away from the car. The next day, Darren comes to school, opens his locker and admires Okta. Steve approaches him and discovers the spider. Steve realizes that Darren was in Krepsley's dressing room and heard their entire conversation. At this time, the bell rings for recess. In surprise, 
Steve drops the cage with Octa. The door opens and the spider walks free. The corridor fills with students, and a deadly spider runs across the floor. Pushing everyone aside, Steve chases Octa with a broom and wants to kill her. Darren runs after Steve and tries to save Octa. The spider senses danger from Steve and bites him on the cheek. The guy loses consciousness, and Octa runs away. Darren decides to help a dying friend and comes to Krepsley for an antidote. But the man calls Darren a juvenile thief and refuses to help him for free. During the conversation, Krepsley realizes that Darren is in terrible danger from Mr. Tiny. Then Krepsley offers Darren a deal, he will turn the guy into a hay vampire and make him his assistant. And in exchange, Krepsley will protect Darren from Tiny and save Steve. The guy is willing to do anything to save his friend, but he doesn't want to kill people. Krepsley explains that it is the vampins who do the killing, not the vampires. After some hesitation, Darren agrees to this scheme. Krepsley performs a blood exchange ceremony. Darren falls to the floor and feels cold. Now he's a half vampire. The guy jumps on Krepsley's back and they fly to the hospital to see Steve. The vampire injects Steve with the antidote. The boy's pulse quickens. Darren tries to drive Krepsley away, but the vampire is not affected by stupid tricks. Soon Steve gets better and even returns to school. And Darren develops a craving for raw meat. He also feels a thirst for blood and almost lashes out at his sister. Krepsley is already waiting for him in the room. He says that Darren will have to leave the family. To do this, it is necessary to stage his death. The guy says goodbye to his family, trying not to scare them. Darren and Krepsley are sitting on the roof. Suddenly, the vampire diverts the boy's attention and wrings his neck. Darren can no longer move. He will live on, but for the time being it is necessary to stage his death. Krepsley throws Darren off the roof and disappears. Everyone believes in the guy's death. On the day of the funeral, Steve approaches a friend's coffin. He puts the phone in Darren's hands and notices he has vampire claws. Steve now considers his friend a traitor. At night, Krepsley comes to the cemetery and digs up Darren's coffin. The guy gets out of the grave. Immediately, a vampa named Murloc jumps down from the graveyard tree. Krepsley smells his putrid smell and orders Darren to climb back into the grave. Murloc lashes out at Krepsley. A furious fight begins. Opponents destroy all the tombstones in their path, and then fall into Darren's grave. Krepsley tries to protect the boy and cover him with himself. Murloc nearly wins, but Krepsley hits him over the head with a shovel and throws Darren out of the grave. Miraculously, Krepsley and Darren manage to fly away from the cemetery, but Murloc pursues them. Krepsley flies to the track and arranges everything so that Murloc is hit by a car. Afterwards, he transports Darren to the Freak Circus parking lot. Krepsley visits a circus director named Toll and asks him to let Darren stay because Tiny is after him. Meanwhile, Darren meets a girl named Rebecca, and they both overhear the conversation. Toll allows Darren to stay on the condition that he works for the good of the camp. Darren will share a tent with a guy named Evra, who is snakeskin. In the tent, Darren promises not to drink Ever's blood, who in turn allows Darren to play on his drums. Meanwhile, Steve continues to go to school. He cannot forget Darren and decides to commit suicide. But at the last moment, Tiny stops him. He says that Darren is still alive, but he became a vampire and betrayed Steve. Tiny claims that his own possibilities are limitless, but he lacks an assistant. Steve is just right for the role. In the evening, Mr. Tiny's car drives up to the freak camp. In a conversation with Toll and Krepsley, he announces the imminent start of a war between vampires and vampins. According to the prediction, two young men will lead the war. Therefore, Tiny demands that Darren be given to him. Toll asks for time to think. The next day, Darren and Rebecca talk sweetly and become closer and closer. Rebecca confesses that she is a monkey girl. She even has a tail, but Darren is not embarrassed. In the evening, Krepsley teaches Darren how to fight as a vampire, because he understands the danger that threatens him. But the guy does not have enough strength, because he purposefully does not drink blood. Krepsley plans to fix it. Meanwhile, the vampins accept Steve into their ranks. The rite of passage is very cruel, but Steve passes it. The first victim of the vampin Steve becomes his high school history teacher. Krepsley explains to Darren that there is no need to kill people. You can simply put the victim to sleep with your breath, drink some of their blood and leave. Soon the victim will come to their senses and remember nothing. The unwillingness to kill is the difference between vampires and vampins. But even after that, Darren refuses to drink blood. At night, the vampins flock to the freak camp. They are looking everywhere for Darren. The guy really can't stand up for himself, because he is too weak. Krepsley comes to his aid. He hides Darren in his coffin. The freaks drive the vampins away, but they kidnap Rebecca and tell Darren he should go home. In the evening, Darren finds himself in his former home. But there is not a soul here because Tiny and Steve kidnapped Darren's family. The guy understands that his relatives are kept in the old theater, where the circus performed. Murloc meets Darren at the theater. He tied up the guy's family and Rebecca and hung them over the stage. Steve arrives soon after. He talks about the people he has already killed and about the pleasure of this process. Steve offers Darren to kill Rebecca and drink her blood, then his family will be free. After that, Darren will have to join the vampins. But the guy resolutely refuses the offer. He cannot stand up for himself, 
because he has not yet drunk blood. But Krepsley had already arrived at the theater. He enters into a fierce fight with Murloc. Mr. Tiny watches with interest, but does not intervene. With the help of her tail, Rebecca frees herself from the rope and hurries to Darren. She offers the guy to drink some of her blood. But Darren is afraid that he will cease to be human after this. Rebecca still convinces the guy to take this step. He drinks blood. The fight between Krepsley and Murloc becomes more and more violent. Steve soon gets into the fray as well and stabs Krepsley with a silver knife. But then empowered Darren, who has drunk blood appears. He attacks Steve. At that moment, Krepsley draws a knife and drives it into Murloc's heart. He dies and with his last breath predicts that now the war will definitely begin. Tiny rejoices at what is happening and thanks all the participants in the performance. But Darren believes that the war will not start if no one knows about what happened. So he gets into a fight with Steve. Old friends are now enemies, but Darren can't bring himself to kill Steve. Tiny separates opponents with a light movement. Now is not the time for them to kill each other. All this was predicted long ago, and the decisive battle will take place later. Darren offers Steve one last time to turn to the light side, but Steve refuses. Afterwards, Tiny sucks the soul out of Murloc's body. At the same time, the body itself becomes small and shriveled, but still alive. Tiny and Steve go to the Vampins. Krepsley hypnotizes Darren's parents so they won't remember the night's events. Leaving the house, Darren finally kisses Rebecca, because he had dreamed about it for so long. Friends return to the camp. Here the majority votes to let Darren stay. However, after this, Governor visits Krepsley and says that it's time for the three of them to go to the vampires. But Darren doesn't know this yet and is happy with the way everything turned out. 